Welcome to. Uh, start over. Okay. You don't need that. No. There's an outtake. You ready? <laughs> I dropped the case. Oh, okay. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Thank God nothing was in it. Three, two, one. I'm a lair bear or a care lair, and Jim is uh, is just grumpy over there. Don't start. Don't start. This is going to be a long episode. Oh, it if is. You, if... It's going to be a fantastic, wonderful episode. We spent some time with the uh, Harrisburg Meps. We had a cares day, and we went to all sorts of wonderful locations. We had our our, our, our wonderful cameraman Patrick. Patrick, thank you very much for all the yes, ass- sir. Uh, uh, assistance that you gave us. But um, yeah, I don't know how else to go into this other than well, let's let's before let's uh, let's just say a little, for the allies' sake. Okay, uh, we'll explain what what went on here. Oh so, yeah, I guess we should do that. So, yeah, <laughs> because we already know. Yeah, you were well. See, you got all excited about your shirt. I'm dressed more appropriately. It's but anyway, a dandy shirt. Right. So uh, this all this first, is my wife's favorite Care Bear. You show the shirt some respect. It's not that shirt that I had a problem with, but we'll we'll worry about that later. Here's here's the thing, allies. This is not our normal content for sure. This is not uh, this is not really going to be '80s based at all, really, outside of the the Care Bear reference. Yes, but um, we felt that this was something that was important to document and important to be part of because it was all about giving back to your community. And for us, this is something that's really really super important. Um, and You mentioned MEPS. We probably better explain what that is to the audience. Yes. uh, The the MEPS is the Military Entrance Processing Station. What they do is they bring in young applicants or uh, applicants as they are, uh, young, not young. They bring them in. They process them into the military. Some branches or the branches, you know, the Army, the Navy, the Marines, the Air Force, the Army National Guard, and the Coast Guard all go through the MEPS so that they can be vetted physically, mentally, and emotionally, and then they stand before an officer, they swear into the military, and then they go off to those respective branches to get training so they know how to protect our First Amendment rights and everybody inside the country, whether or not they believe in the same uh, principles that everybody in the country does. Yes, absolutely. And for the the sake of letting you know what you're about to see, uh, Larry, of course, works there in, in, in the day job. In the day job. Yes. And um, and it's not an evil day job. No. It's just kind of... No. Uh, we, we, we routinely refer to things as the evil day job, yes. but our day jobs are not that evil. No. But um, in any case, uh, the MEPS was going to have a day of caring. Yes. In which they were going to be volunteering at several uh, uh, places throughout the area. And uh, you came to me and said, wouldn't this be great if we documented it? And I said, yes, that would be a great idea. And so this is what you're about to see. And our first stop along the trip is uh, the Central Pennsylvania Food Bank. And I had never been there. Had you been there before? Uh, Not the Central Pennsylvania Food Bank. No, I've been at Project Share, but not the Central Pennsylvania Food Bank. I have to say I um, I was shocked by the level of need. That is out there right now. I had no idea it was as bad as it is, and uh, we we tried to keep this as light as possible, guys. But I mean, the need is there, and when you start thinking about people being hungry, it's uh, it's really tough. So these folks are trying to beat that hunger. Take a look.
the road, it's Jim, it's Larry, it's Larry, it's Jim. We're here for CARES Day that's being hosted by the MEPS, which is a military entrance processing station. We're going to go out to four different locations, three of which you're going to see, one of which we can't really film, and we're going to demonstrate on what caring for the community needs. You know, there's too much negativity in the world, we're going to throw some positivity and try to fight that. Absolutely, it's going to be a great deal of fun and uh, a great outreach program. And, uh, uh, what? What, are you, what, are you, what are you? I'm a Lair Bear! Or Care Lair! The problem is, is, where's your shirt? I have a shirt on right now. You didn't come dressed for the... You know what? We'll get to the next location. We'll see if we can't fix this. Wait, come what? join us. It's going to be an interesting show. Well, we're here at the Central Pennsylvania Food Bank where they distribute food to the needy. We're going to let other experts explain better than we can ever do this because, you know, we're not experts. True. The problem is, is I came dressed for the occasion and you did not. Hey, what are you talking about? I'm, I'm dressed fine. It is care day and you're not here to care. So, you know what? I'm going to use a little bit of magic and... Bam! What did you do? There you go, I got you a shirt! What did you do? I was just fine! No, no, see, now you're now, now you're a Care Bear! No, 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 wait, 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 wait a second, why am I Grumpy Bear? I don't know, why are you Grumpy now? See, it's fitting! Let's go inside! Positions to fill, and it's going to kind of bring us through that. We'll get over there and get going. All right. Thank you all very much for the time. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to go over the positions. Then I'll ask. Sorry, I know you're super eager. We'll get there <laughs> um, I'm going to go over the positions. Austin volunteers, then we'll get up and start working. So the first. Manager for the Central Pennsylvania Food Bank. 
I'm Tara Davis, and I am the Senior Vice President, Chief of Programs for the Food Bank. Last but not least, I'm Travis Berg, the Director of Logistics for the Food Bank. Okay, now if somebody came in here and had no idea what was going on, how would you best explain this? Here at the Volunteer Center? Here at the Volunteer Center. Yeah, so we've got your great group of uh, folks helping us pack some military share boxes over there that are going to go out throughout our uh, 31 different uh, military share sites. And uh, we'll get a dry box of food, we'll receive um, milk, fresh produce, um, protein, so um, for that month. All right, ultimately, what is the mission statement here? What are you looking to achieve? Yeah, well, our mission statement really is all about improving lives, fighting hunger, strengthening communities. And we really do that through um, more than 1,200 partners, program partners of ours throughout our service territory. Um, those are our traditional food pantries. Um, but also we have very specific programming, such as our military share program, that really provides services specifically for active and non-active veterans um, and military members, the household members of those families as well. Now, speaking on the veteran portion, uh, Travis, I understand you are a veteran. Yeah, I am. I've been in the military for almost 21 years. Uh, two MOSs I hold. Uh, I love it. I've done multiple combat tours and humanitarian tours. So this mission is, is what I love, uh, seeing the veterans serving the veterans. Like Tara said, we have 31 military share sites in our 27 counties that we serve. And we serve almost... It's about 3.3 million pounds of food to the veterans. The veterans, they come to the program, they have to show their DD-214, uh, their CAT card, or proof of uh, being in the military. We serve those at legions, and vets, mooses, and VFWs. So we, we kind of want to make sure that veterans are getting served by the veterans. Now, uh, can you explain in your own words, how important is it for veterans to help veterans in a crisis situation? much like hunger. Oh, I, I can talk about that. Veterans, they feel comfortable, they're battle buddies, so nobody wants to ask for food. Uh, so the veterans are there to help them, but it's not only food, it's other services that they can, they can help out with. The VA getting them claims, using tuition assistance, uh, housing, and there's a lot more to that, so it's important. Is there any other statement that you would like to make on behalf of the uh, Central Pencil Food Bank that you would like people to know? One question that I have, is, and, and I'm sure most people are asking, is what resource do you need the most when coming, uh, when, when asking for donations? Is it food? Because I have been led to believe that money goes a lot farther than food donations. Yeah. You're exactly right. So for every dollar we receive, we can turn that into four meals. So we have a much higher buying power than we do when it comes to food being donated to us. As you can see, we're in this warehouse today that has a ton of bulk food, and that's really what we need to be able to serve the more than 200,000 households um, or individuals a month that we do serve. So um, you know, while we appreciate you know the food donations, um, the financial donations is really what can take it even further and allow us to really make a much larger impact for our community. And if people were obligated to donate or felt the need to donate, like you got to do something, where would they donate those funds? Sure. So uh, they can visit centralpafoodbank.org and right on the homepage we're going to have a big red button that says donate now and that's how they can make their donation or they can you know, always mail a check in as well. Um, we still do snail mail. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here at the food bank and I'm looking around at all of the stuff that's here. How long will it take you to turn this over where there'll be something new here and this will all be used? <laughs> that is a good question. We are always a work in progress. Everything that you see over there, um, that is staged and ready to go out the door probably today. Um, we always work on a quick turnaround. Some of the success of the, the product that we have is we have short shelf life. So it's got to come in, it's got to go out. And we serve over 1,200 partners. So, how many, how many people at this point are needing help from, from this facility? Like, like how many people are serviced and fed basically because this is here? 
So we are at the height. When we talk about COVID, that was the pandemic. We had astronomical numbers. We are we have exceeded that. So the need is 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 great in our community. I, I have to tell you, I prior to walking in the store, I had no idea that the need was so great. And I'm absolutely flabbergasted that this many people are food insecure, that they that they don't necessarily know where their next meal is coming from. Is is there you know, what is really the, the thing that people can do to offer the most help to those that are suffering? I think you see it and just looking around in the community and advocate, be a voice, be a voice for the people in the community. Um, we talk about donate, donate your time, donate um, your funds so that um, you know we can maximize that money. Um, just get involved, get involved. There you go, folks. Get involved. Do something to help out. You never know when it might be your neighbor. You never know when it might be somebody who served in a combat forward position and protected our freedom. So by all means, do something. Even if it's, you heard earlier, even a dollar can make a difference. Please go into to this. Tell me about your shirt. This is, this is, this is. I told you, I told you it was a great choice. Doesn't you look like Grumpy Bear? So right here is our service territory for the Central Pennsylvania Food Bank. We cover 27 counties in Pennsylvania. These three indicators with the loaf of bread are our healthy food hubs. We have one in Williamsport, that's 29,000 square foot. They serve 13 counties in the northern tier. Harrisburg, where you're at today, we serve 14 counties. And soon we'll have one in Holidaysburg that's going to help us in the western counties with like Blair, Bedford, Clearfield, and Center County. So this is a multifaceted facility building that we're standing in here where we can't really put our thumb on it. So would you mind giving us a tour of the facility, seeing what we got going on here at the different uh, facilities? Oh, we, one of our friends is here too. Hello. <laughs> oh, now the yes, party can okay. start. Absolutely. All right, so uh, yeah, please give yeah. us a tour and right. show us what you got hey, going on here. Come on out. All right. Good, how are you? So we are now um, going through our transportation operations, food sourcing, logistics area that will then take us out to our warehouse. Oh my, yeah, this yeah. is much larger than I, look at this. So welcome. You can smell the fresh produce in Yep, here. yeah, so we have um, three coolers that really yeah. will house our fresh produce and our um, fruits, vegetables, milk. Um, and then we have a freezer that we'll be able to show you too, where we are able to store a lot of our frozen goods, as well as our Williamsport facility too has a similar setup. So over here um, is where our local partners will do pickups. The majority of the food that um, gets sent out is by delivery, but we do have local partners that actually will come by, pick up their foods, and then have the opportunity to shop with some extra um, Pro or extra um, product that we do receive that's not able to be put on the inventory. Um, and then they have a moment to actually come in and shop into our cooler here where a lot of our produce um, is packed. So you'll see we have- You know all about going through a curtain, <laughs> don't you, Jim? I do, I do. So we do have a, um, a partner in here shopping right now. Um, so you can see they've um, taken the opportunity to grab a couple extra things that are sitting in our cooler. It's Friday, so the cooler is a little bit less, um, you know, inventory, but... Uh, this demonstrates just how quickly you go through. Yeah. Holy yeah. cow. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, years ago when I started, almost 17 years ago, we really would turn over our food probably every six weeks. We're probably turning our inventory over, you know, four or less weeks. Um, in, the, in our warehouses now. So, we'll take you through the rest of the facility. Awesome. And Travis, he, Travis is our numbers guy, so feel free to throw, them, throw the numbers out so um, we, at any time. We distribute about 18 million pounds of produce every year. 18 
million 18 pounds. million pounds. And you're probably wondering, where do you store this at? Where do you get that produce from? So we work with local farmers. We work with the Mark, which is a mid-Atlantic regional co-op. And we work with Brian Campbell. So locally sourced, we try to get that in here and we send that out. I'll show you the next two coolers over here. So then you can see the magnitude of food that we have coming in. Now produce goes in and out daily. So we walk through these curtains over here. Now what you don't know, allies, is in my previous life, I was a produce delivery driver. So I can understand. You're at home here, aren't you? What it takes, what you don't understand, it, like these bags of cabbage, these are upwards of 50 pounds and you have to lug those. What you don't understand is these boxes of apples, these are 40 pounds, which means you have to lug those. Then you've got your, Actually, yeah, because of the storage facility, you can tell that the temperature is a little cooler in here than there are other places because of the certain temperatures that you have to keep the, 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 the produce at. You know, the other important thing here is this is why your knees don't work anymore. No, no, that's the army. Yeah, who's but, Grumpy hey, Bear now? Yeah. Hey, that's enough out of you. Oh. Anyway, yeah, but you can see oranges, apple, cantaloupe, carrots. You can just see the vast amount of boxes. Travis, would you like to explain where some of this stuff comes from? Yeah, like I said, we uh, purchased through the Mark, the Mid-Atlantic Regional Co-op, and we work with other farmers to get farm fresh produce. Even in the winter time, we work with uh, apple farmers that store their apples for the winter months. We purchase those, and then we distribute those to our partner agencies. Very cool. Now, I just saw it here. Oh, God. What are you... What are you... So, we meet again, huh? You know how many times, how many times the bottom came out from this box yeah. that I had to sit in a yeah. parking lot and put sweet potatoes back in the box to get them back in the building? You sure you don't want to change shirts? Hey, that's uh, enough I'll out of you. I'll change shirts with you. Hey. The other way that we get some of our produce, too, is through what we call PASS, um, which is the Pennsylvania Agriculture Surplus System. This is actually dollars that come from the state to allow us to work with farmers within um, the state of Pennsylvania. Um, we're able to purchase their excess and then pay for the processing of it. So um, recently we've been able to take, during the milk crisis, we were able to take the extra milk that was gonna be dumped um, and turn it into cheese. Wow. Um, or we can take you know, a farmer who might plow their uh, potatoes under, um, be able to help them um, you know, take those potatoes off their hands for them. You know, we're, we're, we're spending some time joking around here today a little bit. Larry and I are bringing the humor as oh, we yeah, usually do. Oh, yeah, trying to do what we but, do best. Yeah. But the thing, the thing about this is we're trying to make it as approachable to people because you told us a, a fairly unfortunate stat that a lot of people are just unwilling to, to get help. Yeah, you're and, right. They are. You know, there definitely is a stigma that goes with receiving help, right? Any kind of help that that might be, whether it be from our food pantries um, or from the government. And really, you know, the messaging that we want to get out there is that, um, you know, services are meant to be used um, when they're needed, right? So they're not just because you accept pantry services to receive food um, doesn't mean that it needs to be long term. It really is just to help give you that extra cushion so you can put other additional financial resources towards maybe your utilities, maybe paying your rent, um, so you don't have to worry about where the food's coming from. So really, we you know we want to shine a light on the services that our communities um, provide and offer to our neighbors um, when they need that, just to be able to help um, lift them up out of the situation that they're in. Absolutely. Your situation today doesn't necessarily mean that's your situation tomorrow. You're right. So, yeah, that's an important point to make here on film, Larry. You you left your job delivering produce. Yeah, I left my job delivering produce so I could join the Army, and now I'm coming back into a produce cooler because I understand what the mission is. One thing I want to show you is the amount of skids that they have here. Those used to have food on them, so that is a clear demonstration of how much food this place not goes to mention the here. pallets behind you and the pallets behind me after talking to, to Travis Travis why don't you go ahead and explain to Jim exactly what you have going on here much like so today. over here is where the drivers their orders are scheduled for the next day uh, the operation team does an amazing job of picking the dry orders and then they stage it we know our routes where we're going 
Uh, our straight trucks hold about 13,000 pounds and then our tractor trailers hold about 42,000 pounds. So then in the mornings, my drivers get their load together. There's uh, produce frozen over here. They put it in their temperature controlled uh, straight trucks and then they go to the partner agencies and deliver it to our partners. So you can see there's a lot of turn. Uh, every day this inventory goes in and out and uh, we're sorting the clients that are in need. You guys can come over here. So if you walk in here, it's cold. Everything's stored, so we got chicken leg quarters. That's going to Harris. That's going. What in the, what the Harris? We truck? found Sasquatch. We found Sasquatch. Will you relax? No. Just calm down. Why hey. is there a Sasquatch everywhere we go? You're the one with the grumpy bear shirt. Oh, God. All right, let's get out of here because I can't feel my toes anymore. Oh, well. Travis was mentioning, you know, as our drivers go out to, to deliver the food to our partners, um, we usually, we try and bring them back with a full truck too, so that we can be as efficient as possible. So they'll... Um, so they're dropping it where it's needed and then picking it up from the suppliers. Exactly. Sort of making a complete circle, so to yes. speak. Yeah. Yeah. So while in the morning we're full with the orders that are going out, in the afternoon, this warehouse is full with the product that is being brought back in. That's really cool. We so, back haul about 16 million pounds average. So when, the, like Tara was saying, drivers go out, they bring food back in. Yeah. So wow. I, did, I wanted to stop here for a minute and just highlight. Um, this is kind of like our recycling center. Um, so we have a you know a compressor over here that will um, compact all of our cardboard. We recycle all of our cardboard. Um, we also recycle all of our plastic wrap. Um, each and every skid that comes in and goes out has plastic wrap to it. Um, so we'll recycle all of that as well, um, as well as skids. So some of our skids do get returned back to the vendor, but then some of them get recycled as well. Um, and then additionally, we recycle all of our produce that may not be good enough to send out and kind of has, you know, no longer has that life of being able to be eaten now. Now, what when you say recycle produce, so what yeah. happens with it? Is it like, is it becoming animal feed or? Yeah, great question. So we work with an organization called Organics, and so they'll take it and they actually turn it into compost. All right, so welcome. This is our demonstration um, pantry, um, something that we had set up uh, a couple months ago, actually, to really highlight what a choice pantry looks like. Um, and that really is something that we, a model that we prefer our partners to provide. Now, when you're saying, a, what is this intended to accomplish? The, the choice pantry? Yeah. The model? Yeah, well, like yeah, like what, like that, when right? we, when we've got this set up, is this to basically help people like decide what they need in terms of their health or whatever, or what yeah. is? Yeah, so I think, I'll back up a little bit here. So. Um, you know, while we are a warehouse and we carry a lot of bulk items and our main mission is really to be able to serve partners, right, and give them the bulk um, foods that they need, we also receive emergency walk-ins here. And so we needed to have um, an area where we were able to pull different products um, for households, um, not at a bulk, you know, boxed level. Okay. All right. Yep. I see. Yeah. And so this facility will allow us to um, serve those individuals that are coming to this facility. So it's sort of a small supermarket in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of how we, we look at the um, partner spaces that we have. Um, really, how do they have that set up and how do they highlight the healthier food items as well? And so that's what this is kind of showing some of our partners that they can do um, and how they can set that up, but also serving for us to be able to serve folks that are coming here. Yeah, I'm seeing One here where you, you have it all really labeled well so people know exactly what they're... One thing that, that, that I've noticed since, since being back here, because, you know, I'm nosy and that's my gig, right? is they have can openers here, which tells me that there are some people around here who don't even have a can opener to get into the food. Yeah. You know, how, uh, how troubling is that, that you can't even, like, have a can opener to get into the food so you can feed yourself? And that's, that, that, that's kind of why I appreciate Well, in addition to that, you've got the pull top yeah. designated there as well, and which it, is a it, similar situation. Which demonstrates how humbling it is to see something like this and how, how desperate of a need we need to keep feeding well, and you know, and you know, it's across all. I mean, here the meat options. Some of them have to be halal, so it's not even like it's mm -hmm. one group of people. We've got everyone that has to be considered because 
anybody could be in need. And, and that's the thing. Hunger, hunger doesn't care who you are, what you are, or what you're going through. You know, without a full stomach, you can't think properly, you can't act properly, you can't engage properly. So it, 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 it's very mm -hmm. humbling on how much a meal legitimately means to people. And to prepare those meals, you're going to show us a place where we can do that. I am. Let's so do it. Let's go over to our learning kitchen. <laughs> All right, welcome to our learning kitchen. Look at this. Oh, wow. It is warm in here. <laughs> yeah, it is warm as well. I can um, feel my fingers. <laughs> uh, so this is our learning kitchen. This is where we do a lot of interaction with our partners, a lot of interaction with our neighbors. Um, we uh, hold food safety here to and with our partners to the highest standards. And so we will do a lot of our uh, food safety classes in this particular facility or in this room. Um, but then we also help our partners, um, you know, learn how to utilize some of the really kind of uncommon things that you may not see. Um, for instance, you know, one time I recall having powdered eggs. I had no idea there was powdered eggs. Um, but this was something that we really needed to help show our partners how um, to talk to the neighbors about preparing them um, and utilizing them so that they could, um, they could move that particular product. Um, we also utilize this space for um, our staff. So as you can see, our wall is decorated from last Friday's chili cook-off. Um, so we do engage our staff members and our team here um, with really fun events um, as well. We had nine entries. Mine was number two. Um, hey, but. second place is nothing to sneeze at. <laughs> well, this has been uh, a great trip here to the food bank and on the food in their locations. We've learned a lot today. I know we're absolutely going to be back here. What do you think, Larry? Oh, we are totally going to be back here because we barely scratch the surface of what the mission is. We barely scratch the surface of what we can do to help the uh, Pennsylvania Food Bank or Central Pennsylvania Food Bank. We are definitely coming back here. We're going to do a bigger expose. We're going to try to benefit as many people as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. It's just we're on a time crunch and we got to get going. Yeah. Is yeah. there any final statement that you would like to try to push your message as best we possibly can right now? Yeah, thanks, Larry. I think, you know, really the message is it's, a, it's about community, right? It's about the community helping the community and um, helping those neighbors that just need that extra lift. Um, and so you can do that in a, in a couple of different ways by donating your time, um, donating dollars, donating food, and really advocating too. Um, that can go along with as well. But I do have one last question, Larry, if you don't mind. Absolutely. What's up with the shirt? See? Do you see the face? <laughs> the face matches the shirt. Isn't it amazing? Oh, uh, yeah. I yeah. see it. I see, see it. Yeah. See? Yeah. There it right. is. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Don't get hit by a forklift on your way out. Bye. I'm leaving. We'll see you at the next stop. Bye. So you're you're just gonna just sit like that. You're not even gonna talk about uh, the the t-shirt and the the nonsense that you that you put upon me and these people were. We're, we're joking about. I'm having produce delivery flashbacks right now. Oh, well, I mean, there was that. All right, now that I've shaken, <laughs> it, I've shaken myself out of that. Yes, you had a wonderful t-shirt on and everybody saw it and it was absolutely wonderful. It was not wonderful. Yes, yes, it, it totally was. And the reason why we were doing this is to show that, you know, community outreach is a huge thing. Community outreach can be fun. And it can be absolutely fun. And and, and we, we kind of got this idea off of those uh, public service announcements that yes. you can see at the end of the cartoons, which was the 80s tie-in, although it be it very loosely. Yeah. But as you can see, with Project Share, they, are, they have a massive organization. We went to two separate sites, as yeah. you saw in the video. Video. They are looking for volunteers. I mean, it is too easy to give somebody a meal because once their stomach is full, they can accomplish pretty much anything. Well, yeah, other than a night, good night's sleep. Well, one of the one of the things I wanted to point out here because you know a lot of places will you know get canned goods together or get product yes. together to give them. But the thing that stuck with me about this is that because of their deals with different partnerships and so forth. They can basically put a meal together for twenty five cents. Yes, you know. So if you if you have the way to donate money, whether it be to the Central Pennsylvania Food Bank or a food bank in your local area, 
Please do, because they can make that money go a lot further than they can that box of stove top stuffing. Not that there's anything wrong with no. that, but they can make the money go a whole lot further. So just pointing that out to yeah, everyone and, and uh, you know, that kind of thing. Because there are a couple of things. Canned goods, canned goods need to have their label on them so they yeah. can have an expiration date and you know what's actually in the can. Food does have an expiration date. By donating money, which is something that he and I are both suggesting that you do, it not only doesn't take up space and they don't have to worry about taking a truck to go get it, uh, they can pay for money, or they can pay for the food right then and there, bring in the product, shelve the product, keep the product as safe as it possibly can to preserve what the product is. And money never expires. And money never expires. Yeah. I mean, I have yet to see a hundred dollar bill uh, lose its expiration date and drop down to a fifty dollar. No, I've never seen I've that happen. Never seen that happen. Nope. Nope, no, sure haven't. You know, from there, we actually got a little bit of a break. A lot of this stuff was really heavy that we saw this day. It really, really was. It was an emotional experience recording this, which is one of the reasons we were trying to keep it as light as possible. Because yes. I will tell you, and we'll get into this a little bit more further on, but it was a little bit tough. So we had uh, we had a stop here uh, at, a, uh, at a local library, and that was a really nice thing. We'll show you some footage of that. And uh, there was also a location that we could not go to no. that was a hospice. But they did send a statement, and you will see that. Um, and for obvious reasons, we couldn't record there. Certainly, we would never have wanted to disturb anybody no. at that point or the families. So, uh, in any case, we wanted to show you that footage. Here you go. Okay. All right. We're here in the Fredrickson Library, which means we need to keep our voices down, which means no loud yelling. I'm standing here with, with Kelly and Jalisa, two of my co-workers who have volunteered their time here at the library. Kelly, you worked in this specific library. Can you tell us what the library is doing? The library is servicing the people of Cumberland County. Anybody in Cumberland County or in the surrounding counties can get a library card and they can come to this location and they can check out a hundred books at a time uh, per person. <laughs> and. Um, they not only do they have books and DVDs, we have a language section. Um, we also provide lots of programming for the community, anything from uh, languages to crafts to um, uh, bring, your, bring your pet to the library and read to pets. And we have a business and career center, people who want to learn how to make a resume or who are trying to find a new job. Um, yeah. And what was the basis of today's outreach? What were you guys doing today? We were dusting the shelves, making sure everything was clean for the patrons. Uh, Julissa, what's, what's the library mean to you? It's like an escape to me, where I can just be by myself and be myself. Now, I understand you wore a wonderful shirt today. You wore a wonderful shirt today. What are you wearing today? What's your shirt? Matches his face, doesn't it? <laughs> totally matches his face. I am not grumpy. <laughs> well, we need to get out of here before Jim starts using words he can't use in a public place and do it very loudly. So we're going to take you over to our next location. But thank you for uh, thank you two for what you're doing here and what you did for the library. We'll see you real soon. All right, thanks. One of our biggest goals of hospice is to provide recognition to those individuals who have served our country, and one of our new projects is aimed to do just that. In addition to the certificates, pins, cards, and quilts we already give to our vets, they will also be given a bag that holds more patriotic items that will hopefully remind our vets just how much they're appreciated. The vigil baskets are given to families who sit at bedsides while patients are actively passing. The basket provides comfort items such as water, snacks, tissues, and other small items to show our appreciation for families who have allowed us to take care of their loved ones through this difficult time. The cards are another small token of our appreciation that we show to our vets, patients, and families who cross our paths. The more signatures, the better. Wow. 
All right, and we're back, and uh, that, that was uh, that was a neat little thing at the library that they were doing there. Uh, it was uh, oh, cleaning up the library yeah, and doing yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, it was very, very uh, kind and nice. And what people don't understand is libraries are great resources for different things. I mean, a lot of people who are looking for for jobs will go to the library because yep. of the free internet. Yep. I mean, some houses don't have internet. One of the other things I'd like to point out is that in today's day and age, where we all rely on that device in our hands. Yes. To get information, you just can't beat a library. I'm sorry, libraries no. are extremely important. We can't let them go away, and we have to be using them. We have to be utilizing them, and we have to support them in our community. They are extremely important. In fact, when we were there at the library, they were having a youth community yes. thing with uh, children running around and, and expressing great joy about being surrounded by books mm -hmm. and imagination and the fact that they can use these books and imagination to grow their own imagination and their own knowledge yeah. because they were learning, which is very, very important, not just to learn um, how to read, but it's learn learning the importance of reading and the message that is conveyed and being able to think about what you're being taught through reading. Well, one of the major uh, things that I liked about, about it is it, it made me think of, you know, thinking back to the 80s, the scholastic book fairs we yes. used to have in school, how everybody loved them so much. I That's, that's how I... I, and I still have them. That's how I got my collection of Garfield books. Huh. Was was through that, and I still have them to this day. And I remember getting them at the Scholastic Book Fair. So I, I got reading's a, very important. I got a variety of Calvin and Hobbes books, but we'll still have the Scholastic tag right there. But yes. yeah, my parents always encouraged reading. I'm sure your parents always yes, very encouraged much so. reading. That's how I learned how to read. I believe I said that multiple times because I suffer from dyslexia. And if not for the comic books and Calvin and Hobbes, I wouldn't be able to know what certain words meant, what certain words uh, related to actions. Uh, the fact that I could go to the library and go to yep. the comic book section or the easy reading section, as, uh, as you call it, and actually be able to open up a book and look into it and then have my imagination go crazy and understand what was happening, and it was all just big fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the last place that we visited, this is where things got really, really heavy. Um, we went to Highmark Caring Place. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with Highmark Caring Place, um, it is run by Highmark, which is uh, an insurance company in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And they have set this up um, in the mid-90s as a resource for grieving children and their families. Um, this was particularly difficult for me. And I had a really hard time filming this. I really, really did. Well, yeah, you, 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 you can tell just by your demeanor, like just talking about it and while we were sitting there and as I was interviewing the, the nice young lady who you are soon about to meet, you could tell... The facial expressions that you had, the emotions building up. The emotions are building up in you right now yeah, because yeah. of how hard this was for you. But you toughened it out and we're you know, grateful the, that you did. The thing about this is that, and you'll see it in, in this segment, the thing about children going through something like this is, is that if they don't have the support, mm -hmm. the effects are lifelong. Yes. And I know that personally. So this is something that is so important, and I didn't even know it existed prior to this. So I think that this is something that we really do need to show, and we wanted to honor and show it with a great deal of respect. So, folks, I'm our caring place.
of sound calming down and here's another one over here that's called our volcano room which is for more physical activity Sure, so we are the Highmark Caring Place. Um, we are a free, no cost resource to children and their families who've experienced the death of a loved one. Um, so we have a lot of different things that we kind of focus on here. Um, we focus on raising awareness of children's grief. So um, there is a large grieving population of children um, whose needs are not being met. Some of the things that we do here are run our groups um, that are facilitated by our trained uh, peer uh, volunteers um, so that that way they can um, kind of feel like they're less alone in their grief. And um, we run the groups uh, Monday through Thursday. Um, again, they're run by our trained volunteers. And we also do a lot of different things. So we actually partner with 220 schools um, in our region here to co-facilitate um, peer support groups for grieving children. Uh, we also do a lot of outreach and education and different things to kind of raise awareness on children's grief, so. I understand you do a lot of toy cleaning here too. How yeah. <laughs> important is it that a child who is grieving to receive a freshly clean toy? What, yes. What, what's yes. the expression that they get? Um, so as I mentioned, we run groups Monday through Thursday here. We um, serve anywhere from 15 to about 25 families in those groups. Um, so the toy cleaning is really necessary to make sure that we're not spreading any germs and things like that. So um, we use uh, so we use some volunteers today um, to help kind of clean the toys, make sure that everything is ready to go. We just ran a group last night on Thursday night. We have another one on Monday night, so they'll be all fresh and ready to go. So. What, uh, if, if there's anything that your organization needs above all else, what would that be? So as I mentioned, we run the groups um, during the week and our biggest area of need right now is our uh, peer support group, group facilitators. Um, so there is no background that's required um, to be a Caring Place volunteer. We fully train you, we give you education and training on you know, confidentiality, safety boundaries, all those things, but also how to sit with a grieving child and family um, and kind of walk through their grief with them. So we know that when they leave here, their grief is not gonna be fixed, it's not gonna be, um, you know, they're not gonna get over it, um, but they at least feel less alone. Um, our volunteers' goal here is to help them build those connections with other families and group um, that are also grieving so they feel less alone. No, you have an amazing quote we do. from <laughs> the great Fred Rogers, we Mr. Do. Rogers from the Pittsburgh area. As we were talking off camera, you made mention that this organization started somewhere in Pittsburgh. We did. How branched out did your organization start from its humble beginnings to where mm -hmm. it is now? Um, so we are um, lucky and fortunate enough to um, be kind of funded under the Highmark, uh, under Highmark Caring Foundation. Um, so we get a lot of our funding through there, but we also, um, you know, get donations and things like that from the community. We started in Pittsburgh in 1997. So as you can see back here, Fred Rogers was an honorary chairman of our board um, from our inception in 1997. Um, so we have a site in Pittsburgh. We also have a site in Warrendale, which is right outside of Pittsburgh, and then one in Erie and then us here in Central PA um, we've been here in this region for about 20 years so and if somebody wanted to volunteer their time to help out your wonderful organization mm -hmm. how would they go about doing that so they can get in touch with me um, they can also just call our main number here um, but the fastest way is just shoot me an email um, and let me know and we have our next training class coming up in the fall we do training twice a year like I said it's really um, kind of an intensive training program that will get you prepared and make sure you know everything you need to know um, to help these families who are grieving okay now with our, our, our final moments is there one message that you feel above all others that should be pushed out to the community because grieving children it's it's heartbreaking absolutely it really really is sure. so is there something uh, that you would like to say that would help facilitate sure. the assistance that we need for these young uh, yeah men and women? absolutely so um, a lot of what I hear from people is I could never do that or I don't feel like I have the skill set or you know I could I, 
I don't know what I would say if somebody were to talk to me about their grief. Um, and I would say that a lot of our volunteers will tell you that they didn't think they could do it either. They definitely do, and they do it well. Um, and there's really no uh, no background needed, nothing. We just need you to be a caring, um, supportive person. And it's less scary than it sounds. There's actually a lot of joy that happens here, a lot of um, you know fun that the children have when they're here um, while they're also remembering their loved one that died. So. about this place that I didn't I didn't know about yeah. and uh, although it's a sad thing that brings people here it's a great mission that they're on oh well uh, you can see by the walls I'm here for you you're here for me we're here for each other and that is the whole mission statement I couldn't couldn't ask for a better place to end the day mm -hmm. or a, as far as the different sites and having a beautiful quote from the wonderful mr. Fred Rogers yes absolutely who's done nothing but try to push for positivity in this world. Yeah. And we want to thank you for your time and, and opening this place up. Yeah, thank absolutely. you for having me. Yeah. It's been wonderful. It's been yeah, wonderful. absolutely. Can you tell me about your shirt? <laughs> See, look at his look in the face. That is precisely why that's a fitting shirt. I am not grumpy. <laughs> then what do you call this attitude you have? Let's Back just, to the maps. Let's just go. Let's just go. <laughs> All right, I am sitting here with Senior Master Sergeant Pike. Uh, he is going to be the spokesperson for the maps today because I would do a great job and he would do a better one. So, what was today's mission? So, today's mission was essentially to get our MEPS employees and staff out in the community to kind of help out wherever we could. Uh, we used our FRG uh, to resource out and find out what organizations are out there around Harrisburg. Uh, in the surrounding counties and areas. We picked out four organizations and then we deployed our folks out to help each one of those agencies. And today has been a very, very eye-opening day, wouldn't you say the least? I would, I would. I mean, you know, we, we, we were at four different locations, or the, the community was at four different locations. We hit three of them because there was one we didn't feel was justified, and that was Gentiva. Uh, do you feel that there are more days like this to come? I do. Uh, I think it's difficult to pinpoint those out uh, within our workload and work schedules due to our scheduling being uh, operations throughout the year and we'll, we have a very limited number of days off. However, I think enough folks got out there that I, I believe that we got a few folks interested in doing this in their spare time when they're not on duty. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to get some more volunteers out on off-duty time as well. Okay. Is there one, one, if you could put a final bullet point on it, one period, what do you feel today was probably the greatest achievement that the MEPS could contribute to the community? Um, if I was going to say one thing, I think overarchingly we got all of the employees together and out in the community. Um, that's difficult to do, and I think if we even got one individual to turn around and kind of decide to do this in their own time, I think that was the, the big takeaway. Well, it's been a very, very big day. Do you all feel fulfilled that you went out and helped the company? The community has been served. I feel that we did a wonderful job. I How do you? I, I'm very, very excited about the day. We've seen some, uh, some great outreach for some organizations that are doing great work, and I know that these people were proud to be a part of it, and I'm proud to have been able to be here to help talk to you. And I am proud that I represent such a wonderful organization, but they all have one more question for you. I don't, I don't know why. Why, why, why are you wearing that shirt? I'm out of here. But it's, but it's not, I'm not grumpy. It's fitting. I'm not grumpy. <laughs> Back to you in the studio. It was actually Highmark Caring Place that gave me the idea for us to go around and, and film different areas. I as we were talking about the situation and we wanted to or I was like hey let's film Highmark Carrying Place they're cleaning toys we're all about toys let's go do yeah. the toy thing yeah. and then it opened up uh, because I wanted to highlight the other organizations because that's not really fair, you know? Sure, one, sure. One organization is not more important than the other. Well, and one of the things that we learned while at, at the, uh, the food bank was that they said despite the amount of people they are taking care of they wish they could be handling more because they know the need is greater yes. than they are servicing, meaning that people who should have their help 
are not going and getting it, either because they don't know the resources there or they're embarrassed or whatever, and they shouldn't be. And and the food bank made that very, very clear several times while we were there that, you know, they judge nobody. If you need help, you know, your your situation that day will not be your situation a year from then. And they are able to provide an incredible amount of support. The same goes for, for Highmark as well, where they are there to provide a resource for these children and for their families and also even for the library, which is yes. a go-between because regardless if it's somebody who is suffering financially or needing uh, a, a, an, something to get their mind off of something or to help them move on, that library is a resource for all of those oh, people. Oh, very much so. Um, you know, they, we, there's mentioned here at Highmark that toys are so important because so many children, we've discovered, uh, use play as a way of dealing with their grief. And so... Uh, I know that Larry and I intend to go back to both of these places yes. at some point and do further film work for them if, uh, if they'll have us. Um, and certainly we have begun to reach out to some of the toy people we mm -hmm. know to see about uh, perhaps doing something fantastic for, for some kids who need it. Yeah, Christmas is going to be pretty big around here. Let's just say yeah. that because there are plans. We've got some conversations we need to have. Absolutely. There's some reach out that we need to do. But before we get to Christmas, the first thing we need to do is thank each and everybody, each and every one of you, uh, all the staff members, all the ones who were facilitating these, these great places mm -hmm. for allowing a couple of knuckleheads to come in with a camera. <laughs> yes, and, and we, also, we also need to thank the people at MEPS, too. Oh, I was going to get there. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, 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 we're going to get there. Yes. Uh, a couple of knuckleheads. I already hit the, on the knucklehead part. Uh, for letting us to come in and film your wonderful organizations. Also, on the same note, we want to thank everybody from the Harrisburg MEPS who took their time and went out into the community to spread some joy and to spread some love for some people who need it. I mean, think about it. If you're a person, right? And let's just break it down. You just went through a hard time. Mm -hmm. You just lost a loved one. Yeah. All right. You 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 you're you're trying to show some joy uh, to your 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 child who just went through a, a hard time. Yeah. All right. And let's say it was the breadwinner. The major breadwinner is gone. Right? Yeah. Yeah. God. Let's say you just lost the major breadwinner. Now uh, you have resources of of going uh, from hospice and dealing with that grief to supporting your family through Highmark to being able to feed your family through the food bank while going to the library to find yourself uh, a, a job or a career that can support your family through all of this. Yeah. Those four organizations have done so much for our community. We need to keep pumping them up and, and, and giving them resources and giving them love and giving them uh, what we can. I mean, even if you don't have a dollar, you know, you can you can work that dollar. I yes, mean, they always need volunteers. They need volunteers. You know, as you heard in all, in all of these places, they need people to help. And, uh, you know, even if you don't have the money to donate, we know times are tough. You, you've got two hands. Yeah. You know, you, you, you can always help out. So, and we are helping out in the best way we know how, which is to get the word out there and boost the signal. Um, and uh, the folks at MEPS were wonderful. We heard from, um, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm struggling now to remember Tech the Master title. Master Sergeant Pike. Yes, it was so many yes. words. Yeah, there, <laughs> there are a lot of words. Yeah, nice guy. Very, yeah. very, very nice. Fact, everybody was really yeah. nice there. And, and we were so grateful that, uh, that the MEPS treated us with dignity and respect and yes. you got to see the place you got to see where i work i did a little, nice little walk around i did and it was it was fascinating to me because having never been in the military i've never gone through a meps i know mm -hmm. there's multiples it's not just yeah. that one i've never been through one so that was actually a really neat experience uh what was uh, not necessary what was the uh, shirt not oh so. the shirt was completely necessary and that's the reason for the face and of course, you you see, he decided not to wear it for obvious reasons. No, I, that was it was completely unnecessary. I was I was abused because of that shirt. You were not abused. I, I was abused. How how were you abused? How were you abused? I was, I was Everybody abused. commented on what a wonderful shirt you were wearing and how nice it was and the fact that you have that look in your face. That one right there. And uh, before we close this out. Well, I, I do want to make mention that uh, Jim did get to see the actual carpet that I swore in on. I did. Before I, did. I joined the military, they tore it up. 
Yes. They did were, you? Well, did you get a piece of it? I got three pieces. I got a piece for me, a piece for my father, and a piece for my godson because he swore in on that same carpet, and we all have that piece of carpet. That's that's pretty that's pretty dope. Yeah. I have to say that that's really really cool. So even if uh, 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 there there are very few things in life that you 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 cherish and love, and if if doing this project and 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 and, and the reward being a small piece of red square of what I swore in on. You know, I can't, uh, I can't thank them enough. Well, folks, this has been again. This has been something really, really different for us. I know it's outside of our normal shtick, but I hope that everyone really, really enjoyed it and got something out of it. And uh, if not, if at least you saw something and it, it, it drives one person to want to help out, yes, then, then it was worth it, and we did our part. So. We want to thank all of you for joining us and for Larry as Jim, for Jim it's Larry. We will see you next time, allies. And there's more to follow because this is just the genesis. We are not done yet. I'm not wearing the shirt again. You're totally wearing the shirt again. Click. <laughs>